Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on how to get a handle on your email inbox. I'm Tim Ryan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County, and I'll be your host. Our presenter today is Belinda Wasser from Rocket Girl Solutions. More on Belinda in just a minute. This webinar is being done in collaboration with the Fairfield County or the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce. First, some brief information on SCORE. Over 320 offices and 11,000 volunteers nationwide. We are part of the Small Business Administration. SCORE Fairfield County has over 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value added services to small business owners. First, free one-on-one -on -one counseling. Two, we have education workshops and webinars. We put on over 150 a year. And three, we have extensive resources on our website, including a network of subject matter experts at your disposal and templates to help develop business plans and projections. Some useful information about today's event. If you have any questions, please use the chat window at any time and during the presentation, it's located in the lower part of your screen. Our webinar will end promptly at one o'clock to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Now our speaker, a business workflow and logistics expert with 25 years of experience Rocket Girl Solutions founder, Belinda Wasser, is hired by small businesses to act as their part-time business manager. She helps their clients make more money, more efficiently, and with less stress via streamlining and improving systems, online payment setups and management, social media engagement, website builds, and marketing automation. See her newsletter articles and testimonials on her website rocketgirlsolutions.com. I'll now turn it over to Belinda. Belinda, it's all yours. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everybody. I'm really glad to be here today. Um, this is a great topic and one that um, really uh, spans uh, the whole population because very few people have a handle on their email inbox. I think a lot of times um, this is what it looks like, right? <laughs> like help, this is how it feels. So I wanna to, I want to talk about how we can get on top of it, how we can manage it, some strategies. And um, I want to invite you to add your questions into the chat box as we go, because I really wanna make sure that you have a, you know, a, something that can help you get a handle on this. You know, it's, it's funny because before I got a handle on my inbox, I used to kind of brag about it, you know, like, oh, well, I have this many in, in my inbox. And it was almost like a, a badge of honor. But the problem was I also used to do this thing. It was a game I used to play, an air quote game called looking for bombs. And what that meant was remembering something I was supposed to do, running to my computer, and frantically looking for that email that I was supposed to either answer or act on in some way, um, and then handling it. So the, the, the sort of game of it was to make sure that nothing blew up um, if I missed it. And that's why I called it looking for bombs. And for th those of you who are currently doing that, you know this is not a good way to live. If you're like me, a lot of your client requests come through email, so I've really got to stay on top of my inbox to stay on top of my work. And I, I, let me tell you the truth about this. It takes a commit, it definitely takes a commitment. But once you get it down and you figure out how to manage it, a whole level of stress is going to be removed um, from, your, from your life, no matter how many emails you get a day. I get a lot of emails every day. And, um, and I'm able to manage it. I, I did this exercise probably about eight years ago um, when I moved my email from Outlook to paid Gmail, so Google for Business. And, um, and ever since then, I've been able to keep my inbox 
at about, you know, when I leave for the day, I like to have it be around 50, 30, you know, something like that. That That's the sign for me that it's under control. And as soon as it goes over 100, I, I know with certainty that I'm missing something that I'm supposed to be doing. So let's talk about this first concept. It, it was interesting to me. I gave this talk live um, a few months ago and what I realized by the questions that the people were asking me um, was that they were using their email inbox as a filing cabinet. So they were asking me all of these uh, sort of complex questions about, well, how do I structure my folders and, you know, and, and how do I, um, you know, how do I find things? And, and what I realized was that, that they were actually looking at it as a filing cabinet, but what it is, is a delivery mechanism. Email is, is a way for people to get files and information and photos and things like that to you in a digital way, but it's not a storage unit. It's not a place to keep them. So first, before we go any further, everybody put in the chat, did you think that your email inbox was a filing cabinet and how many in emails do you have in your inbox right now? If you just put that on the chat, I just like to, um, see where we all stand. Guilty, can't even count. Yes, <laughs> 15,000, 255,000 use folders as a filing cabinet, over 9,000, no idea. Innocent, 4,000. <laughs> Guilty, 55,000, embarrassing, 1,000. I have, oh my gosh, you guys, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Good. All right. So this is awesome because this is going to make a difference today. Thank you for doing that. That was fun. Okay. All right. So here's what I want to talk about. Let's talk about a workflow. So you would not keep your, I hope, your bills and your important papers in your mailbox, right? So think of it the same way, just a delivery mechanism. So let's talk about my email workflow and how, um, and how I manage it. So an email comes in and I look at it and it's, I sort of, you know, do triage is, um, it's, is someone on fire and, or is this just some information that I need? Um, or do I need this? The reason I do that is I just, I, I do this, um, I do this probably once an hour, maybe a little bit more. My email, I have three screens that I work with and my email is always open because of the nature of my work. And I have 50 clients all over the country. There is something that could happen during the day where they need my input right, right then. And so I want to be available to them for that if I can. So I'm constantly monitoring, you know, my emails and the things that I don't need to take any action. They're strictly informational. I archive. So let, let's talk about archiving for a minute. The reason I archive and I don't delete is because I want to try to take as many decisions out of this process as possible. You know, if you think about it, um, it if on, we, on weeks when I say to myself, I'm going to uh, go for a walk every single day, I go for a walk every single day. When I have a busy week and I say to myself, you know, I'm going to go for a walk three days a week, maybe four. What happens is I maybe go once because every day, every, you know, every day I have to make that decision again, where if I just have already decided, this is with everything in life and work, right? If I've already decided, then I just get my shoes on and I go out the door. So I don't want to be sitting at my email with wringing my hands thinking, should I save this? Should I archive it? What should I do? I just archive it. And yes, sometimes um, you'll hit um, a, a, a quota, I guess you call it, um, a, and you have to you have to upgrade your um, your email account to hold those emails. But the way I look at it, and everyone's in a different spot, but the way I look at it is, I'm much more productive, um, working and billing my clients and staying productive that 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 way than I am for the dollar or two a month that I'm spending on the emails. I didn't used to feel that way. Um, I used to need to keep everything perfect and we're going to talk about that and the pitfalls of that. So this is the way that I handle that. And I don't, I also don't keep all, all of, well, I, I, what I want to talk about is the filing. So let's, let's go into that. Okay. So deleting, um, so archiving, not deleting. Now, if you're on Gmail, there is a folder called all mail. 
that's where literally all your email goes. So I can take things out of my inbox and archive them and they will stay in all mail. So I always have access to them. I just don't have to um, be tripping over them all the time because the only thing I want in my email inbox are actionable items. Let's talk about your attachments. So you wanna be careful when you're moving from this filing cabinet of an email inbox that you don't create you know, a disaster on your hard drive um, instead. So what you wanna do is create meaningful file names and we'll, or uh, folder names, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but only keep the attachments that you need. So, so let me give you a real life example. I do a lot of um, email newsletters for people. My clients send me the content in a Word document. I open up MailChimp. I look at the, I look at the Word document. I add the words to the MailChimp document and I send the test to my client. I no longer need the Word document, so I close it, but I don't save it. It's still an attachment in my in email, but now I'm going to archive that email because I don't need that anymore. I've sent my client a test and my work with that, that email is done until she tells me that the, that the, um, the newsletter is ready to, to um, send out. So I'm not piling up all of, the, you know, all of these Word documents that have email newsletters on them because they're, they're already done. Their expected life you know, is gone. So here's a question I'm gonna just jump into. Um, I'm assuming you have separate or personal business emails in different accounts. So I have one email address, only one email address. And the reason I only have one email address is because I want my email to be an advertisement of my business all the time because potential clients are everywhere. And, um, and I, so I, I want to be visible to them. In my email signature is my logo my tagline and a link for people to put themselves on my calendar for a free 38 minute consultation, which is exactly how my clients find me. So I don't keep them separate at all. And also, um, you know, that's a, that's a question a lot of people ask when they have had a corporate career, because we all learned in corporate, you keep it separate, right? Especially nowadays, it's so volatile, people get laid off. You don't want your personal life on that laptop that the IT department is about to ask you for. So we tend to keep things separate, and I think that's good. However, when you're a solo and you have your own business, I think it's a good idea to merge everything because I just look at it like I have one life. You know, I have one calendar, I have one 24 hours a day, you know, and, and one place for all my emails to come in. So um, how many of you have separate emails or just one? If you just put that in the chat, I'd love to know where you guys stand on that. Separate, separate, separate. Oh, somebody has five, three. Oh, five and three, that's gotta be really painful. Now, separate one for work, one for personal, multiple emails for business, and Perry has one. Congratulations, Perry. <laughs> that's great. So separate one. Yeah, so what happens is, um, Oh, okay, so here, Elizabeth, hi Elizabeth. She says um, a lot of her clients want her to have specific emails for their companies. I have that too. So let's talk about that for a minute. So there are times when you're going to wanna to keep what I would call a separate universe. So I have a, um, a client who his, I check his email, I do his scheduling, and that would be a total disaster if that were to merge into mine. So what happens is, um, I mentioned I have three screens. He has, his name is Bob. Bob has um, a window that is his um, Office 365, his Outlook, which is what he uses. And I, I say to myself, okay, I'm going to work on Bob's stuff. I go over to his email. I open up his calendar and I work over there. A sound is made when, um, when he gets an email or when I get an email, I have my own email address um, at his company, but that's, that's a little different 
thing. And you're right, um, it can be very um, overwhelming. And there's a tool for that that I used briefly. I prefer the method of having my email on one screen and Bob's on a separate one, but there are tools for that. There's one called Shift. I think it's tryshift.com is the URL. And what you can do is have multiple email accounts all open at once and they're not commingled. You just click, you can see them all on the left and you click on the different email addresses and then you can respond from within, within those. So you're actually logged in. It's like a portal that lets you do that. So, um, so that's a way to manage that too. Um, all right, so that's a, that was a really good question. Um, all right, so you guys need to simplify a little bit, I think, because you're probably going to drive yourself crazy. All right, so that's how I, that's how I handle the attachments. So uh, the name of it is Shift. I believe it's tryshift.com. And it looks like MacMail, the MacMail application does the same thing. Um, and to some extent, you can do that with Gmail. It's a little bit more difficult depending on you know, the settings that the, um, the email um, administrator has set up. So sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not. Um, but definitely look at um, consolidating and thinking about you know, what you use the email addresses for. I had, I had um, a really old email address and it was, I was kind of sentimental about it. I wasn't using it, but it, it was tied to some logins. And so what I did was I, I um, created a filter so that that email address was isolated in a folder. And then I left it there for a few months and I looked through it and I just realized um, I just realized that uh, it was time for it to go. So I just, I let it go, changed a couple of logins. So it, it like I said, it does take effort, but it's, it's definitely worth it. So the attachments that I download, it's important that you have your hard drive organized too, right? So you need to have a whole system. So the whole system for me for managing information is I use Dropbox and I have a folder called clients and under that each client has their own folder. So when I download the attachments, I put them in their folder and I make sure that they have a, a meaningful file name. So, so back in the dark ages, remember when we could only have eight characters, dot something, right, for a, for, um, a, um, for a file name. I don't even remember what the convention was for folders, but it was probably equally as difficult. That's not the case anymore. So for example, this presentation right now is in my presentation folder and it's called score webinar on man getting a handle on your email inbox 7 20. so there's no reason you know not to do that and it's important too because when i was getting ready for this presentation i'd given it before and i want to be able to find the presentation that i the slides i did before because i don't want to start from scratch right i needed to change a few things i updated it and added a few thoughts but for the most part, I want to, I want to just be able to use the same, um, you know, the, the same information. And I have, I have clients who have very, um, you know, I have hundreds of documents for them, and it's important that I can hand, you know, hand them back to them. So download the attachments and don't keep them in their in, in your in, in your inbox. Now, sometimes I do file things, very rarely. So let's let's talk about that. Say, for example, one of my clients um, has, he sends me his email newsletter text. Now, he has a different platform than I typically use. And whatever date I start his newsletter, that's the date that it's going to look like it was created. So I don't want to do it the Friday before the Friday it's going to go out. I want to wait until it's closer to that day. So what I do is I take that email. I put it in his folder. I do have a folder for all of my clients. I put it in his folder. And then what I do is I time block on Wednesday, the following week with his name, John Newsletter, and I put it on my calendar. So now the queue on my calendar is, I need to do John's newsletter. I remember it came in on Friday. I put it in his folder. I open it up. I create the newsletter close the Word document, do not save it, and archive the email. So um, very efficient, um, very, you know, very efficient way to get everything out of the inbox. So 
Quinn is asking, after you download the file, do you still keep the email if there's info in the email? That's a good question. So if there's something that I need to reply to the client, I'll hit reply and I will answer and then I'll archive the, e the email. Because to me, I sort of think of it as like um, hitting a tennis ball. You know, I'm like, I hit the, the tennis ball back. Now, if it was something, for example, today I'm going to talk to my client Lynn at um, two o'clock and she sent me something yesterday and it, it need, I need to talk to her about it. So what I did was I use Evernote and I put the note in Evernote because when I call her today, I'm going to open my notes full file on Evernote and she has her own note. Again, I have Rocket Girl Client is the, the notebook and then there are notes inside. So everything is really the same because I can't, um, I, I can't remember where I put things, but I can remember where they go. You know, so you might not remember where your keys are, but if you keep your keys on a hook by the front door, you know where they are. So that's the logic behind this. All right, so let's see, a couple more questions. What calendar are you using? Um, oh, okay, all right, it, so what I was saying, I wasn't clear, I'm sorry about that, was time block, so B-L-O-C-K. So what happens is on my Google Calendar, you can do this on Outlook, you can do this on a piece of paper, you know, it doesn't have to be high tech, but what I do is I decide, so we're going back to the example of John's newsletter. He sends it to me on Friday. I can't start it till the following Wednesday. So on my calendar, I, I put a little block of 15 minutes that's a reminder that says, John, newsletter. Now I could put that on a list somewhere, but my calendar is really where I live. My calendar tells me where I'm gonna be, how long I'm going to be there, and it's also how I help myself remember the work that I need to do. I just put a 15 minute block, which doesn't really, it doesn't account for how much time I will spend on it. It just reminds me that it needs to be done that day. You can do that as well, actually block the time. Um, I, my, my day is very flexible because I'm not ever really sure who or what's gonna fly into my inbox. So I just try to keep it as flexible as possible. Um, Jennifer wants to know, you're welcome, Quinn. Jennifer wants to know what is Evernote? Okay, so Evernote is a super cool free application. It's like a digital notebook. And what happens is you create, you create notebooks. So I have um, a couple. Um, and, and, and the notebooks are at a very high level. And what I mean by that is it's, you know, my Rocket Girl clients, that's one notebook. Um, I am in a, a couple of different organizations, so they have their own notebook. And then inside I have notes. So for example, today when I open Evernote and I go to talk to Lynn, I'll click in the Rocket Girl client notebook and, and you, you'll see it's very simple, very simple. Um, and I open her note and the notes that are either in the email that I need to talk to her about or comments that she's made while I was talking to her on the phone or something that I wanna to remember to tell her that occurred to me all go into that note. It also, if you, you can set it up so that it will sync to the evernote.com and so that I can open those notes on my tablet, my phone, or a different computer, and they're all, they're all syncing all the time. So it's a very convenient way to keep information. There's also a clipping tool that you can, um, it's like a extension to your browser, and you can save screenshots in there, you can save PDFs. There's, I, I'm sure I'm only scratching the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this. Um, but really, um, you know, check out Evernote. It's a great way to take notes. I find much better than notebooks um, because I can just search on words. Okay. All right, so meaningful file names. Um, so let's talk, about, um, let's talk about the bleeding that's occurring right now. Okay. So the email comes in. I decide if I need to archive it. Let's talk about one one other um, thing that I, I um, did in my inbox to keep it clean. I have a folder called fingertips. And what that means is it's stuff I need at my fingertips, so information. So here's an example. One of my favorite clothing manufacturers had a huge sale this morning. They're trying to get rid of all the summer clothes. I decided I wanted to get a couple of things and I 
bought them and immediately I have the receipt in my inbox. I do not want that in that um, in uh, receipt in my inbox because now I'm tripping over it right now, but I don't want to archive it because I don't want to have to go look for it. But what's going to happen is, let's say I have a question or I need the tracking number or, um, you know, it doesn't show up or I want to check later the receipt against my bank, something like that. Um, I want it at my fingertips because I hate wasting time and I hate searching for things. It's just, it, it's just part of being rocket girl. So I put it in this folder called fingertips. Another thing that you can put in there, um, my daughter used to take the train to Boston all the time and I, um, or so I would buy her ticket and I'd want to keep it there because when we get to the train station and they want to scan it, I just want it at my fingertips. I don't want to be searching. I don't, don't even want to really print it out because now I have this piece of paper I have to manage. So I just put it right there. So Felicia is asking me a question. Do you use the same email for purchases online? Um, she says that she, te she tends to get spammed. Um, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about unsubscribing in a little bit. Um, I do use the same email. I, I found that um, by using the paid Gmail that I have. Tell me if you guys don't know what that is, and I'll I'll explain it. Um, but um, they do a great job of keeping the spam out. I really don't get much spam at all. And of course, I think all the time. All right, I'll explain paid Gmail, someone just put the comment in. I, I think a lot of times, not a lot of times, all the time, you know, you buy something somewhere and now you're on their list. So you just have to take yourself off. And, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. All right. So I'm going to explain paid Gmail. Free Gmail is what a lot of people use, which is, um, it would be Belinda Wassert at gmail.com. Yes, G Suite. Quinn is saying they keep changing it to Google for Business, G Suite. I, I can't actually keep up with it, but what I, you just Google paid Gmail and you'll see a link and you can just sign yourself right up. There is a little bit of a technical piece, um, but it's, you can go pretty step by step. You can also call Gmail or call Google. They have tech support when you're paying for their products and you can get help, which is um, very handy. So, so paid Gmail allows you to bring your own domain. So my email address is belinda at rocketgirlsolutions.com. Rocket Girl Solutions is my domain and it's the address of my website. What I don't want to do because it's just not as professional is have rocketgirlsolutions at gmail.com. So that's why I pay for Gmail. And it is, I believe it's $6 a month per email address. And you can have aliases. So if you wanted to say, have um, you know shopping at rocketgirlsolutions.com or um, uh, or, you know, info or something like that, support at, you could do that and it would all go into your inbox, but you could create a filter so it would go into a different folder. So that's what um, paid Gmail is. And, and so I really don't have problems at all with, um, with spam. And the other thing is that um, there are when when Gmail, when you first buy it and you open it up, there are tabs, like there's a promotions tab. I even have all that turned off because I just don't want another place to go. I just want it all to come into my inbox and um, and to go through it. Now, I, I know that it's all an archive. So there are some emails and ads that I want to get because there are some products that I really enjoy. Like, for example, I buy my business cards at moo.com and twice a year they have a sale and it's a really good sale. And so that's when I go and look to see if I, you know, if I want, if I need to buy business cards or note cards or whatever it is that I need. So I do want them there, but as soon as I see them, I look, I see they're just telling me about a new product, I archive and I keep moving. So there's really, I try to keep the emotion out of my email inbox, like, oh, they're sending me all these emails, you know, but when that does happen, we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's assume that, um, oh, Quinn, um, moo.com is M-O-O.com. They make beautiful, beautiful business cards, um, note cards and um, the, very high quality. And they also offer an option where you can order 50 business cards for $19. So if you don't give a lot of business cards out or you are, um, you know, you're just starting out and you don't want to spend a lot of money, that's a great thing to do. Yeah, so Felicia says, um, 
Oh, <laughs> she says, I try to keep the emotions out of my inbox. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I do. I do because I hear other people, you know, I work around other people sometimes and, you know, they get upset and that upset is, you know, it's causes stress and then it causes you to lose your focus. And then all of a sudden you're thinking about something completely different. So a lot of the systems that I put in place in my business are for that very reason that I need to stay focused on the work. I get paid by the hour. So it's important for me not to get off track. All right. So now let's take a minute and talk about how to fix this problem. Okay. We want to try to try to stop the bleeding. So think about a pipe. Emails are going in and um, and they're 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 piling up and your inbox is getting you know more and more and more packed. What you want to do is you want to stop the flow on one side. Okay, so emails are not going into your inbox anymore. So but let me finish before you say, what is she talking about? Okay, so you want to take all of your emails, and this is going to take a little time, but it's going to change your life. You want to take all your emails that are in your inbox, except for one or two months worth, depending on your risk tolerance, and I'll explain that in a minute. And you're going to want to put them in a folder. And it is still the big giant smeary mess that you had before. But what will happen is over time, you know, you won't need these emails. Or if you do, you're just going to go back into that big smeary mess that you already have, but it's not called your inbox anymore. It's called your archive. So clear out all but one or two months. Now the risk tolerance is, is thinking about are there any actionable emails older than two months old that you might have? So you might have to search around, you know, for, you know, if you remember that you have to do something with your health insurance, you know, you might have to go look for an email, but generally I find two months will do it. Then take the time, go through those two months and take everything out that's not actionable and just archive it. Now you're going to get down to the, your actual work that you need to do. When you get there, what you're going to want to do is lump your emails. So let's say you're working on a project. Let's say you're working on, um, you know, a, a project for a client. You'll sort your email inbox on their email address. You'll open up Evernote. All, all the other pieces that you need are going to be in um, your folder in Dropbox or OneBox, whatever you use. And um, so everything's open. Now you'll go through those emails and you'll do the work. You'll respond to the person that you, you know, if you need to respond to them one at a time, and then you'll archive the emails, you'll close the attachments, you'll close everything up, and then that work is done. Then you look at your, if you're me, you look at your calendar, you see what else, what's the next job, you know, that I need to handle. And I do the same exact thing. So I lump my emails so that I'm not going through and being like schizophrenic, you know, doing one thing for one person, one thing for another. And because I'm watching my, because I'm watching my um, email all day, I can see what's coming in and I can, I can sort of get a sense of what needs to be done. So like right now, um, since we've been talking, six emails have come in and there's an ad there's something I don't need till tomorrow. There's an action that I'll do later. And then someone's just checking in. So I know that I don't, I, I don't need to touch that right now. However, if I were working and something urgent came in or something I was waiting for from a client so that I could take a next step, I would just touch it, look at it, you know, see, see what needs to happen and then go back to what I was doing. That doesn't happen all day long. It happens, um, it happens from, you know, a few times a day. In between each task that I do, each client project, I do check my email and I archive the things that I don't need. It just kind of keeps it clean in there so that I can keep my thoughts straight. All right, we have a couple of questions, so I'm just gonna jump over there for a minute. Okay, the name of the business card source is Moo, like a cow, moo.com. And if you don't have a design, check out their templates. Um, they're really pretty. So you can do that. Um, Another question, do I have subfolders in fingertips folder or is it a quick catch all for things you need to access quickly? That's exactly what it is. It's, um, it's, a, it's a catch all. And I know that the things I need are at the top. Um, and because, because it, it keeps, you know, keeps 
more emails get added, you know, not a ton, maybe a couple a week. Um, and I don't clean it out. And the reason I don't clean it out is the, the, you know, the same reason. I don't want to use my time at my desk cleaning it out because it's not going to, it doesn't help anything <laughs> in my life. Um, I'd want, I want to get my work done and then do something else or have time to do more work. Okay, so can you actually sort Gmail online version by sender? Yes. So you click in the search, if, if you look in your Gmail and you look above, um, you know, so let me tell you something else. I have something called preview pane enabled so that my Gmail looks like um, Outlook. So it has the, co the column on the left with the folders. Then I have a preview pane, you know, the, not the preview, but it says, you know, the, the name of the sender and one line of the email when it came in. And then I have a preview pane, which is I can see the actual email when I click on, the, you know, on the email. I hope you guys are following me. It's like how Outlook works and probably everybody here has seen Outlook. It's called preview pane and it's a, a free add-on that you can um, set up in Gmail. So where was I going? Um, oh yeah, okay. So up on top, there's a search email box. What you wanna do is type the word label, L-A-B-E-L -E colon, and then um, without any spaces, the person's, oh wait, hold on. Let me just try it because I'm going by, hold on. Yes, so you wanna type label and then um, inbox space, and then the name, the person's email address. So label, colon, inbox, and that will pull up all of the people, all of that person's email that's in your inbox. And since there's only actionable email in my inbox, that's how I do it. So label inbox, you can do label sent, you can do label a folder name. So that's how that works. It's really great. Um, so I, that's how I lump them, label inbox and then the person's email address. Just have to be careful. Sometimes people have more than one email address and you might miss something. So if you have people like that, you just have to keep track of that. All right, so here we go. Let's, more questions, how to send to archive. Okay, so if you're in Gmail and you're, there's a, a row of icons right above where the email, you know, who it's coming from, um, there's an, arrow, there's a box and a down arrow. If you hover over it, it says archive. And what happens is it then just takes it out of your inbox and it puts it into, well, it's already in all mail. So it's already in all mail and it takes it out of your inbox. Okay, so let's see some questions. Is fingertips on your desktop? My Gmail is all cloud-based. So it's on my screen, but it's actually on my in the cloud and it's on my phone and it's, you know, it's everywhere, right? Um, let's see. Okay, really good question. Conversation view. If you, I turn all conversation view completely off everywhere, conversation view is a surefire way to get into trouble. I'm gonna try to explain what it is. Um, what it does is it keeps the threads together and the danger, and I got into a lot of trouble with this, is somebody replied before I saw a reply come in and I missed a whole thing that I was supposed to do in the email. So wherever you are, stop what you're doing, go turn conversation view off. I don't remember where you do it in, um, in Outlook, but you can Google it and when you do, you'll figure it out that I just have that one account, but I mostly work in Gmail. Go click on settings in the cog wheel, on the very first page of settings general, um, search for the word conversation view and turn that thing off because uh, holy cow, really. Um, can you show on screen? Um, uh, let me hold on that for a second. I think I can, I think I can but let's keep going and maybe we'll do that at the end. Um, okay, so Loretta wants to know, how is archive different than folders? Um, it's really, well, archive is a folder. It's just a big giant folder with all your stuff in it, just to get it out of your inbox. So you wanna get it out of your inbox, organize it, lump your emails, clean it up, 
um, move information where it needs to be moved to for those two months. So either download your attachments or um, you know, move the information over to Evernote, whatever you need to do. And if you have, if, and if you need to put those emails in folders, but I never put actionable emails in a folder because I will forget to look at them unless I put them on my calendar. All right. We have lots, lots more questions. So let me keep going. Okay. So let me look at what's next. All right. Okay. I, I'm going to show you my, I'm going to show you my, my Gmail. Okay. So unsubscribe, unsubscribe from things you don't need. If you want something like, let's say there's a newsletter that you want to keep because you go back on Thursdays and you just have a binge party and you read them, create a filter and put them in the folder, but get them out of your inbox. You know, your inbox is really the sort of sacred place um, for you to, um, you know, for your work for, and for, you know, the money that's coming in and your projects and, you know, to keep things really clean. Okay. So I'm going to show you my inbox. Now you can't judge me because I've been busy this morning preparing for this. All right. So let me just move some things out of the way. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, I just wanna make sure there's nothing confidential here for clients. Okay, no, all right, so here's my e email inbox. So guys, tell me if you can see that. I just wanna make sure that the screen is, can you, okay, cool, all right. So here is the, um, sorry, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. Uh, what, did, what did I call it? Um, mm -hmm. Preview pane, sorry, preview pane. And I can toggle that a couple of different ways. So here you can see, these are all the folders here. Um, these are the emails, so I can scroll through and see what's going on. And then this is the preview of this email right here. Let me show you how to turn conversation view off. So we're gonna go to um, see all settings. Right here, conversation view off. It is the devil. Okay, so make sure you turn that off. We'll go back to my inbox. Okay, what else? All right, let me show you. I'm gonna type in label, inbox, and then I'll type in um, Budley, who works with SCORE. We were emailing this morning, so I'm, I start to see, I start to type his email address and I click, and now these are the emails in my inbox from Budley from today. And you can see, see the label inbox right there. So then I can just go like this because I don't need them anymore and archive, boom. And now if I go back to my inbox, they're not there. They're not there. What other questions do you guys have um, that I can show you? So archive, this reports is reporting spam. You only wanna do that if it's really bad um, and you've asked to get off of the list and you can't because that is a big deal um, and Google will block them. You can delete, you can always delete things. I typically, like I said, don't. Um, oh, fingertips, someone wants to see fingertips. Okay, good. So I have to say, this is, this is not how I would set it up with clients. I've been sort of going a little um, crazy doing some different things. So that's what this is all doing right here, but I don't recommend that. I'm just, I'm the cobbler's daughter or however that works. So here's my Rocket Girl client reference. Here's fingertips. I have another folder I didn't mention called M Emily reference because she's away at college and the school will send me things like they just sent me this email about how she's going to go back to school and you know what we're going to do and um, uh, you know and when she goes back to school and I don't want to keep that in, in my stuff I want to keep it separate but but here you can see so you know I um, I ordered something on Lord and Taylor. Uh, I, this is what I was talking about this morning. So that's what's in fingertips, just things that I'm going to, uh, to reference. Do you ever clean out or organize your archive emails? I do not. I do not do that um, because I'm really trying to focus on my time on where, 
where it's going to make the impact. And I have to say, this is something that really started with me getting like over 50, I think, you know, like it used to have to be all perfect for me, but I just realized that the value add for having my archive be perfect is like zero because you can see, so here's my all mail. How many emails are in here? There's 476,000 emails in here. And you know, they're, I don't need them. Um, I could, I could go clean them out, but I just decided not to. Um, I really, um, I decided not to. I just would rather either be building my business or, um, or having fun. All right. Do you use rules feature? Can you explain how you were using the left? Tight, uh, Quinn, I'm not sure I understand exactly. Do you use the rules feature? You know, I used to, but I really don't anymore. It's still set up. So you can see here, this is going into the Rocket Girl inbox. So there's a folder over here because I thought everything was going to get tangled up. But this is, this is pre inbox being cleaned out. Um, land. So before that, I had to have all these folders and I had to have all this stuff because I wasn't taking care of my inbox. So that's, so I was just trying to peel the things out that I was going to need later versus just take care of stuff as it comes in. So that it's like a whole different philosophy. So these folders for my clients, I, I do need because I put things, I put things in there. Um, but these other folders, not so much. Um, so to, to the left of your names, how are you organizing that? I have a hard time figuring out how to use the files. How are you to the left? I'm sorry, Quinn, I don't understand the question exactly. Let me show you how labels work though. Maybe this will answer your question. So let's say um, I wanted to, labels, okay. So here's how labels work. So let's say I wanted to put this mic from Buffer, let's say I wanted to put it in a folder, I would select this and you can select a whole bunch of them if you wanted to keep them. And then you click labels and you can see that I have, um, I have all these different labels. Again, don't need this, but don't wanna spend the time to clean it up. This is my old corporate thinking when I set this up eight years ago. I've simplified it dramatically. But let's say I want to take this mic from Buffer and I wanna put it in the Linda Katz folder. Okay, so I do that and I apply. Okay, so now if we go to the Linda Katz folder, right now it's still in my inbox. Okay, so I need to archive it to get it out of there. Okay, now it's out of there. If I go to Linda Katz, it's right here. So it's out of my inbox and it's, um, and you can also drag it. You can just drag it over there. Um, and what I'm going to do now is archive it by I think I have to remove the label. Hold on, manage labels. I hardly ever do this. Oh, that's not it, sorry guys. Hold on. Oh, here, it's right here, archive. So I'm gonna archive it, which takes it, should take it out of here. I don't ever do this. So I can move it back to my inbox and I can go here and um, archive it. Okay, let's see, other questions. How, okay, so here's a question. How do I decide on my, the titles for labels? So if I were to invent this um, from the beginning right now, what I would do is I would have a client folder and I would have um, under that a subfolder or label for each client. Then I would have, um, there's a couple other business things that I'm working on. I would have folders for those and that's all I would have. Um, I would not have all of this and, and um, at all. And then better, um, any suggestions, if you are not using Gmail, which appears to be how this is set up, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm not at liberty to show you my client's Outlook inbox because it's, you know, it's private, but it's the same thing. I have folders, I have an archive folder. Um, in his, I save nothing because I'm just doing scheduling. So I do the scheduling, I put it on the calendar, I send the invite, I reply, I sent the invite and I archive it and that's it. So there is not a difference between folders and labels. It's the same thing. It's a holder. It's a way of organizing. So um, no matter what application you use, whether it's Yahoo Mail or AOL or whatever it is, there are, there are containers. So think about it more like that. In Gmail, 
they're called labels. I just used Outlook for you know a million years, so I'm used to thinking about it like a folder. Um, so that's that. I'm going to move my email over here, and um, I'm going to open it. You guys are just you're asking all these great questions, so. Um, this is where you can find me. You can go to Rocket Girl Solutions and you can subscribe to my email newsletter. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And we still have time for questions, but that's the end of my presentation. So let's see, more questions. By putting emails in folders and leaving there, isn't that the same as archiving? Um, yes, but let me tell you why I don't do that. So what I don't want is a folder for my client that is filled with everything they ever sent me. Because if I'm looking at my, um, if I'm looking for a client, say for John on Wednesday, when I'm going to go for his, get his newsletter, if he's emailed me 20 other times, which he very certainly could have, they're all going to be in there. So I only, I only, um, I only put in the folder, the emails that I need and I archive everything else. I hope that makes sense. What are all the organizing tools you are using? Well, that is a question. <laughs> um, well, Gmail, Google Calendar keeps me straight. I, that tells me where to go and, um, and it tells me what work I need. I use um, project management software. Um, you'll have to keep in mind that this, this systems that I'm talking about right now are nine years old. So when I started out, I had some notebooks, some post-its, my computer, one screen, you know, and I was in the guest room. So uh, these systems that I'm describing are, are older. So don't, two, one, judge yourself against them. And two, you know, it took me, it's, you, want to, you want to choose the tools that are appropriate for where you are in your business. So like I said, in the beginning, I use notebooks. Now I use something called, um, Teamwork, which is expensive and heavy duty, but it, I have 50 clients, so that's important. Um, I use, um, and that what I do in there, I have repetitive tasks, like for a client setting up a webinar, and there's 12 steps, and we do it three times a year, and I can't remember all the steps, so that's where I put that. I could also do it in Evernote, but this just keeps it cleaner for me because it's an actually, it's a checklist. Um, the other organizing tools I use, I use Toggle to track my time. That's T-O-G-G-L. I use the free version to do that. Um, let's see, I'm just looking around my, my computer. I use Dropbox, that keeps me organized. Um, I think that's about it. I use Stripe for uh, my credit card processing, um, my, Word, my website's on WordPress. Um, but it's pretty simple system and it's pretty inexpensive, you know, so email, project management, Evernote, and my calendar. That's kind of it. Um, yeah, so we have time for probably a couple more questions. Here's one. Uh, in one of my businesses, I use HubSpot, which I love for grouping emails and activity. Are there others like this? that are for lighter, lighter weight usage. Um, yes, so um, there are a lot out there. There are um, Agile CRM, uh, Copper, Capsule. In fact, I'm gonna try to carve out some time this weekend um, to look at Capsule. A lot of my clients use that and they like it. Um, it's really the one that fits for you. I, I found with working with so many entrepreneurs, over these nine years that everyone's brain is wired a little differently. And, you know, there are, are people who love Trello. They cannot stop talking about it, using it. I spent a whole day really trying to understand it because I thought it was me. Like I didn't get it. It, it is me. I, I don't get it. And so, <laughs> so I'm in teamwork. It's a wonderful product. I just put a client onto it and it's working beautifully because it sits well with him. He likes the visual piece. He likes the way you move things around. I'm more of a linear Excel type of a you know, thinker. Um, so that's why I, uh, I chose that. So Dropbox over iCloud uh, over Google Drive. Okay, good question. I do use Google Drive. I use Google Drive for information that I'm sharing with other people. Most of my client files I am not sharing. It's um, 
sort of my work, if you will. You know, they ask me to create a document, I file it so that I'll have it when they can't find it in two weeks, and then I, um, I email it to them. And um, so there's work that I need to keep to work on. Gmail, um, Google Drive, I use for things like um, tracking. So for example, um, one client has, um, we do a newsletter and he wants to know how many opens, how many opt-outs, how many clicks. And so each week I add another line, he does his newsletter, well actually every other week, every other week I add another line and I, into the Google Sheet and I note, you know, how many people's open clicks so he can see the trends in that sheet. Um, Google Docs are good also for things you're working on together. Like I have um, clients that we're working on, um, we're, we're tracking the, a project in it because the client likes that. So you don't have to worry about version control when you're doing that. Um, but Google, but Dropbox is really just my preference. I like to work in the native Microsoft Word applications. I've just, um, I, it's where I was trained and I'm the most comfortable there. Um, I can't speak to iCloud. I do have an iCloud account and um, some of you know, my pictures and things are there, my backup of my phone. I just never really investigated it. Okay, so Quinn, um, project management, uh, my project management software, Perry, is um, teamwork. Um, it's, it's not inexpensive. Um, if there's a minimum of five seats you have to buy and it's about 60 bucks a month. So look at Asana, look at Trello, look at Basecamp, really see what your needs are. Because in essence, I'm really helping to run 50 businesses. So if you're just running one, you might not need that kind of um, horsepower in yours. Quinn is asking, how do you organize your time? I, uh, i.e. do you have actionable, actionable item from email? How do you organize it? When do you fit that in? Do you have certain days for this and that? Yeah, I, okay. That's a really good question. And uh, Tim, please interrupt me when you um, want to stop and um, we can, you know, wrap it up. So, how I organize my time is, um, well, the first thing is I sit down at my desk pretty much every day at the same time and I work all day. I, I consider my, I have a full-time business. So that's, that's part of the mindset that helps me to just not be thinking about that I want to go vacuum something or, you know, go shopping right now because it's Wednesday at one o'clock and unless I've scheduled ahead of time, I'm not heading over to Lord and Taylor. I'm like, that's not what I'm doing. So just releasing that helps a lot. Starting in the morning helps also because, you know, it's easy. You can stay, be at your, your kitchen table until 10, right? Reading the paper or something, but people with full-time work don't do that. So I sit at my desk, I look at what's come in over the night before. I have my work that came in prior to this morning on my calendar and I look at the priorities, I look at my schedule and I pick the most important thing and I do that. If I'm having trouble settling down, like getting in the groove, because you know sometimes stuff will happen and you won't be in that settled in place, um, I'll do something easy that I know how to that I know how to do without using a lot of my brain power just to get in the groove. Um, and the other thing is I listen to music. I have Pandora on all time all the time um, when I'm not talking. I listen to country music. It's you know it's relaxing. And I after I finish something, I take a minute and I say, okay, that's done. I close everything down. Look at what I'm going to do next. Maybe grab another you know uh, iced tea and then sit down again and, um, and jump into the next thing. And, and I look at my calendar, figure it out, and I just keep going. So I, it, thanks, Belinda, that was great. You're welcome. Uh, so practical, so hands-on, uh, very, very good. I also wanted to thank uh, Fairfield Chamber of Commerce and, and uh, we know we do have Krista McCormick uh, on, the, on the line listening. Unfortunately, we weren't able to turn your mic on, but uh, I know she wanted to uh, send a special thank you to SCORE and uh, Belinda for such a great presentation. As a reminder, if you missed some of the uh, points or, or verbal suggestions there, uh, recording of this webinar and the materials will be available in a couple of days uh, on the fairfieldcounty.score.org website. Please check our website for information on upcoming webinars. On behalf of SCORE and the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's live webinar. In closing, a big thanks for Belinda for presenting today. Have a nice day.
everybody. Bye.